Two people sitting, having a conversation on the internet. You sit and think and wonder to yourself, is this a podcast? Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Is This a Podcast? I'm here today with my good friend and comedian, Jason Roback. How are you doing today, Jason? I, I think you have that wrong. Oh, that that's wrong? Yes. I, I guess we'll just have to redo the intro. Two people sitting, having a conversation on the internet. You sit and think and wonder to yourself, is this a podcast? Hello and welcome to the 15th episode of Is This a Podcast? I'm your host, David Thorne, and I'm here today with Jessica Roberts. How are you doing today, Jessica? I'm actually doing quite well. Thank you very much. All right. That's good to hear. So <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, get it started. Just go ahead and uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, Jessica. Um, I'm 35. I'm a mom. I like uh, short walks on the beach, and I enjoy the short bus. The short bus. All right. <laughs> there are a few things that you said that I did want to ask you about. First off, you said being a mom. So I know you do comedy. And you're also a mom, so how does that work out for you, being a mom and doing comedy? Sometimes the comedy just writes itself. <laughs> I, um, I, I, I know your one joke about the goldfish in the dog's butt. That, that's, that's oh, hilarious. Oh, dude, I'm not kidding on that <laughs> one. It was 7 o'clock in the morning. They had just got here. They had goldfish in their hand. The dog was laying down, and my son literally took a goldfish and just shoved, tried to shove it in the dog's ass. <laughs> I was just like, no, honey, no, 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 wrong hole. <laughs> Don't feed the animals through that hole. <laughs> yeah, this isn't South Park. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Remember that episode where yes. they like yes, eat turkeys I... and, sh and shit yes, out their mouth? They were, yeah, eating weird. through their butthole and shitting out their mouth. I do remember that. Oh my God, it was crazy. I was like, what? So does that ever uh, affect like getting to open mics? I can imagine it probably does when you have children and whatnot it did at the beginning but um i am now divorced mm -hmm. and so at night my ex has the kids i have them during the day because the whole covid thing and my kid can't go to school yeah but even then he still had them and so it, it kind of worked out for me i was hitting i think i hit from january to march 16th when i had to we all got shut down yeah um yeah, I I think I did about 130 mics. Oh wow! And that's yeah. before the yeah. the whole quarantine shenanigans that we're in now. That's a that's a lot of mics. I don't I didn't ke never keep track of how many mics I did, but I know you probably did more than me because a lot of times you'll you would go to JB's and I just wouldn't feel like going to JB's. I love JB's. They're a fun room. Oh, I, yeah. I really do enjoy the room. Sometimes it's kind of it sometimes feels like some people will classify it as like a mini touch of class. But I think that I've done better. Touch think a I've class better, junior. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. I think I've done better at uh, at at uh jb sometimes than actual yeah. touch of class yeah. even though touch of class is full <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. You're like, ah, it's just not working for me touch of class has the best hecklers though those uh those drunk ladies that'll sit right up in front of the stage and have probably had oh, yeah. way too much to drink and they try to get up on stage with you oh man i've never had one do that but i know one night this one was there and i was ready for her and they kicked her out right before I went on stage. Oh. And it like, couldn't be as bad as scoreboards now. That no, shit was crazy. That was one of the best night sets I had at Touch of Class, though, because I went up and I, like, commented on the lady and all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, I was going to sing a song about her. And I, like, sang the song and then, like, went into my stuff. I, like, went in. I, like, built it up for this one joke. And I was like, I've never told this before. And I got them to, you know, like, want the joke. 
and it was a joke I never did when I gave it to them. They fucking ate it up, and the rest of my set fucking killed. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the best set I've ever had at Touch a Class. There's a little Asian lady there that does stand up, and I think she only does it at Touch a Class. I can't remember her name, uh, two? but she gets up and literally fucking annihilates everybody, and it's just very dry, very monotone. But she just fucking annihilates everyone, and I love that. That that girl has some talent. I think I know who you're talking about. She has glasses yeah I think yeah I think, I think it's I, two because she goes to vince's too i think i've seen her at vince's a time or two i've never seen her at vince's but yeah then again i yeah. haven't we none of us have been to vince's in a while yeah but, i'm wondering if vince's is gonna be opening their mic back up since technically they're a restaurant well i think right now they're actually doing some renovations so oh, okay because i remember seeing a post on facebook that um, that they apologized, but they were going to be closing for some modifications or renovations or something like that. So. They picked a great time to do it. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, you should just do it. Like, you're already shut down anyway. You just might as well. They're really the ones that are behind COVID-19. They just did that so they could remodel. They could remodel Vance's. <laughs> All right. Um, yes. U.S. government. Yes. I, I would like to start COVID-19. I need to redo my business, but I need a small business loan <laughs> that I can't get approved for right now. So you need to shut everything down so I can get fucking approved for it. Oh, yes. That is a, that's a great conspiracy theory we just made up there. Somebody's going to hear this and believe it. <laughs> I, I just think that the aliens are using COVID to freaking fatten us up before the harvest. Hey, that makes so. sense. Ancient astronaut theorists would probably agree with you. <laughs> can't remember that dude's name but i just always see his hair and, and just his face and just, I, I know who you're talking about and i can tell you his <laughs> name it's giorgio a Succulus. oh shit yeah i'm i'm uh i watch ancient aliens though i don't like I believing do too. that stuff i, I do too it's because i've seen that we've had you know cell phones for years apparently yeah yeah but Aliens and the extraterrestrial has been something that's always fascinated me, though. Well, then you should read my grandfather's books because he was an admiral in the United States Army. Or not Army. He was an admiral in the Navy. Uh-huh. Sorry. And his name is uh, Admiral Byrd. Yes. And I don't know if you know about him. But no. Yeah. If you want to you wanna hear about aliens and stuff, you should read his books because he, he actually talks about... Uh, Middle Earthers and how they're down in Antarctica. What? Middle yeah, Earthers? Like the, hobbits and shit? Yeah, like, mid, well, Middle Earthers, people that live in the middle of the Earth, the entrance to it is supposedly uh, at, at the end of Antarctica, and he's met with these people, supposedly. Okay, I need... And he has these books published. Yeah, yeah. Well, you also have to remember, he's my great-grandfather, so this is a while ago. Yeah, yeah. He, they were down in Antarctica, supposedly looking for Nazis, and wound up finding aliens. That's what the, that's. And then very once he found the aliens, they had to do the you know the usual American thing to do was to make him look like a fucking weirdo and a crazy. So. Yeah, I mean, I've Finally seen some. My family down into the trails of white trash. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen weird lights in the skies that I can't explain, but there's probably an explanation. Yeah, but they always say it's like yeah. some weather balloon or some oh, sort yeah, of most, testing most or whatever. Definitely. But, no, but I mean, you have to think about it. They have an Area 51 for a reason, and why the fuck can't anybody go in there? True. I, mean, I tell you this, if I ever became president, I would live stream that shit and be like, look at the gray guy. Like, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't give a shit. Yeah, there's some... Everybody already su suspects it anyway. Yeah. I know that there are a lot of good conspiracy shows and stuff about extraterrestrials on Netflix. That's usually there, what I put on to go to sleep to. There's a guy that my ex watches, and it literally talks about like cloud formations and how if you look in the clouds and you see a triangle, yeah, that's more than likely probably an a, alien, an alien spacecraft because triangles do not form in clouds. Oh no, like triangles? No, I wouldn't. I've never seen a triangle shaped cloud, so I've probably never but seen a UFO. But if you see one, if I if see one, that's see a UFO. Yep. Just be like, oh, yep. triangle shape. Some of these people are very convincing. I mean, yeah, like it's interesting the theories. That's just like conspiracy theories in general. Like, there's the craziest ones out there. Like Donald Trump's a, Trump's a time traveler, one of my favorites. 
Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie Contact? Uh, no, I don't Matthew believe McConaughey that. Matthew McConaughey and I, think, I so. think it's Jodie Foster. It's 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 about them deciphering how to make this particular machine or whatever. And one of my favorite lines in that movie is, "That's a hell of a lot of space for us to be the only people in it." Well, yeah, that's it's, true. That's definitely true. And it's only our ego that tells us, "Hmm, we're the only ones here." <laughs> no, I don't think so, dude. There's no way. There, if there's not other life in the universe there's multiple dimensions or something because there's got to be other life enter the spider verse oh man that would be cool like that was a great movie i had uh i had pondered this earlier while i was streaming like if you met yourself would that be you because it's technically another form of you but would you be the same i guess it really depends though I don't know. I'm pretty even toned, so like I have my bad moments and I have my good moments. So I think I would still be pretty neutral. <laughs> that's that, I don't know. That's one of those like questions that you probably should ponder on a lot of sides. But I have balance. a twin, so it's like I already have. Like, do you, do you really? You have a yeah a twin. She like, doesn't look exactly like me. Oh, no. she's not like a paternal twin or just somebody a doppelganger. She's a, she's a fraternal twin. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and she's not an identical twin. It's actually uh, really weird. My older sister and I are the ones that get confused for the twin than my twin. That's weird. It's yeah. Definitely weird. I know that I had mentioned pondering stuff on psychedelics. And with that, I want to segue into <laughs> another topic that I like to ask people about. Have you had any interesting experiences on controlled substances? Stuff. Any interesting experiences on controlled substance, i.e. drug trips? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I lived in Chico, um, and hippie, there's a lot of hippies in Chico and stuff, and uh, <laughs> I did mushrooms oh. for the first, for one of the first things that I ever tried, psych and probably the, I think that's the last time I ever did psychedelics, to, to be honest. Um but um, I, I had eaten them, you know, and apparently some people say you're supposed to throw them up. Some people say you're not supposed to throw them up. I'm not exactly sure because I only did them once and I never threw up. And so um, and I did a giant cap, like oh, a big wow. ass cap. <laughs> and uh, I was in the I was in the children's park <laughs> tripping. And I was watching the trees breathe in and breathe oh, yeah. out and breathe. And I was like, I didn't realize it until like, I don't know, maybe an hour later that I was actually breathing. And it was just, it was just, yeah. you know, my breath, the trees. And so I'm like, man, I really got to pee. And it was a trip to walk from the park to the bathroom. Like <laughs> everything, every, it just kind of looked all like wobbly and everything and just weird. And so I finally get into the bathroom yeah. and it, it looks like the light underneath the door is coming in and coming out and coming in. Apparently I like think the world's breathing around yeah. me. And so I finally go to the bathroom and I start staring at the, the, the mirror in the bathroom and uh, I'm just like, wow, this is just crazy. Like it reflects me but is that really me but, the reflection you know what i'm saying and like people are banging on the door and i'm not even fucking paying attention i'm having like this whole existential like time to myself to like you know reflect on the universe which really i didn't do much of i just thought i was <laughs> you, you you probably were no <laughs> i'm not yeah. gonna lie if i got caught well, so in the then, mirror myself so then i get out and they're like man what the fuck and i was like well, i was only in there for a few minutes like bitch you've been in there for an hour and a half and so apparently I was like, I was just having a time of my life talking to myself and, and, and trying to explain the universe to myself. Um, oh, wow. cause there was a part in, in animal house where mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're in smoking with Donald Sutherland's character, the professor. And he's like, there's infinite universes. Like at the tip of your finger, there could be a universe. And I'm just like sitting there like, I have ten fingers. Like I could have ten universes. Like it was so fucked up. <laughs> That's great. And then I left, and I went to the water, and oh my god, water on shrooms! It was just like 
it was so freaking it felt cool it felt better than molly to me yeah um, it was just it was really calm and i'm like i am one with the water and then i i like snapped out of it a little bit at that point because i was like god damn it i remember going to aspen oregon mm -hmm. Ashland, Ashland, Oregon, and seeing these fucking hippies standing in the damn mm -hmm. uh, creeks and shit, and like I'm one with nature, and I was like, oh hell no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> like it snapped me out of it, and so I just kind of like walked around, and I noticed that on mushrooms, like if you have alcohol or weed or cigarettes, you will have none of that by the end of the night. Like you <laughs> do it all. Like oh, yeah. there's there's no stopping you. So yeah. I mean that was the one time, and then fucking at, by the end of it, I had a panic attack. <laughs> oh yeah, like that's one thing that I've heard. People have told me you can't have a bad trip on acid. I don't know if that's true, but I, I know. Did acid, I did mushrooms. I know that I've did mushrooms, and I've never heard that you're supposed to throw them up. I've heard that you can, they can make you nauseous and throw up, but you're not supposed to throw them up. I mean, well, I, I was told you let them sit in your stomach for a while and kind of like juice and do whatever, and then when you throw them up all the toxins as you're throwing up hit your body because your your esophagus soaks up those toxins so it's supposed you're supposed to throw up no i i'd never thrown up i don't believe in that shit like if i have to I take a like, drug I, I don't like to throw up even when i was drinking and doing other stuff like i was not a puker if i threw yeah. up i was fucked <laughs> so. I, I know the only time i like throwing up is when i feel like crap and i usually feel better it's like I get those nauseous moments where it's just like, okay, I feel like I need to throw up, throw up, and you're like, okay, I feel like 100 times better. Let's go get back to the day. Yeah, <laughs> when, I, when I have like a fever or if I just know that it's coming, I'll go into the shower because it's a drain. It, it all goes down. I'm just like, fuck it. Let's just get it over with. I make myself throw up. I'm finally better. Like oh, yeah. After I finally th I throw up like twice. And then that's it. I hate throwing up. It's the worst feeling in the world. I'd rather get poked in the eye. Oh, God. I would rather throw up than get poked in the eye. Fuck that. I'd I would rather get poked in the eye. Any day throwing up over getting poked in the eye. Because <laughs> I like seeing stuff too much. Well, I'm not saying, like, lose your sight, but I'd rather, you know. Rather, yeah, like, yeah, just, like, poked in the eye, but, you know, I just don't yeah, want anything going that, on my dude. eyes. Like, I just, I hate throwing up, and I was so glad when I was pregnant with my daughter that I did not ever have morning sickness, ever. Uh, that's good. That's yeah. pretty, and that's pretty fortunate. Why I never, well, no, that's another reason why I never found out I was pregnant until almost five months long, and because I didn't have that prenatal, I lost my fucking teeth. Oh. So... Yeah, and, and, and yeah, it was bad. I know you had the had the joke about that. Your daughter literally sucking the life out of you. Yeah, before something. she was born. Yeah, and yeah. So now, I have, now I have a denture uh, on the top, and probably soon on the bottom because they're they're going to. It's just it's, uh. she sucked the calcium out of me. And so one of the things that I love to joke about is the fact that I can eat Captain Crunch without any fear because everyone says it cuts the roof of your mouth. Well, when you have dentures, you no longer have or a roof of the mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, sweet. That's, it's yeah. also bad because if you get brain freeze, you get it really hard and you don't realize that you're going to get a brain freeze because you can't feel the cold. Wow. So it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> you don't know until it gets in your stomach. You're like, oh, fuck, that's way too cold. Yeah, and then it's just too late. Like, it's just, it, it hits you like a ton of bricks. Like, I've gotten um, the whole brain freeze so bad after having my dentures that, like, I almost drank boiling water because I was just like, I need to warm up. This hurts so bad. All right, Jessica. Another thing that I was wanting to ask you about, I've asked many of my guests about this. It's something that, you know, we all, most of us went through probably, and that's high school. Ugh. Well, <laughs> I lived in foster care, so living in foster care, you can potentially be moved a lot. And like just say 2001, um, I moved like six different times and you need X amount of credits to fucking graduate. But because I moved so much, I couldn't get the credits. So I ended up going to a continuation school in Chico called Fairview. Mm -hmm. And before all that, like, I was a total fucking nerd. Yeah. Like, pe not, like, nerd as in, like, the classic nerd sense. It was more like people just made fun of me because they could. I was always the new kid. So, mm -hmm. and, and uh, one of the more prominent things on me besides my tits is my forehead. <laughs> so, basically, I was called forehead 
for forever, and it used to piss me off, and now I'm just like, I don't even give a fuck. I embrace the fact that I have a giant head. Like, <laughs> I don't care. You know, yeah. some cultures, they actually stretch the goddamn head to make you, because they, they think the, the bigger your forehead, the more intelligence you have. Well, that's not true. I'm <laughs> not <laughs> uh, do you have that in one of your jokes? No. You should. That's pretty, that's pretty funny. I would but, have... um, no, it was really weird. When I went to Fairview, um, it kind of changed like 180 degrees. Like, yeah. people enjoyed me, and we were like, hang- I would get, you know, I'd go to parties, and, and it was it was cool. It was neat. And, and I did graduate uh, high school with uh, honors, basically. Um, I graduated top female scholar athlete of the year, and I graduated – one of the top credit earners and stuff. I actually am pretty smart, but I'm oh, not wow. like I'm not like genius level smart. Gotcha. But um, yeah, it, it kind of sucks because living in foster care, you move, and yeah. you know if they don't like you or they're not getting enough money for you or you're just an asshole, like you move. Yeah. And when I was, you know, my teenage years, my grandmother passed away. Yeah. And uh, when I was 16 and after that, I was like, fuck the world. Fuck you people. Like, I totally went goth. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> I, yeah, dude. Black hair, black eyeliner. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do the black lipstick, though. Yeah. And I didn't do Wiccan and, and all that other shit like some kids did. Yeah. I just was a total fucking emo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, and I didn't think I was an emo until the other night when I was watching Bevo, I think is what it's called. Yeah. And it's all feeling emo, and I was all, hmm, maybe I am, because I <laughs> saw, like, a Blink-182, or or I think it was um, oh, AFI or something, and I, uh. like, clicked into it, and I was like, I know almost all of these. <laughs> like, like it, there was a chunk where it was like pretty boys and shit that like whiny little shits where you just wanted to go up and kick them and just be like, fuck you, cry already. <laughs> like, for the most part, I knew almost every song and I just had the realization at 35, I was like, oh my God, I was an emo and I always make fun of them little motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you were subtly making fun of yourself. It's like yeah, well, subtle you know, self-loathing, because you know, that's what most of my comedy is anyway. Making fun of myself—that's the best so, kind. That, I mean, I was always told, and everything that I've read, you know, I've read the book The Improv, and I've read like other books and stuff, and it's always basically stating: do what you know, talk about what you know, because if you don't, people are gonna know that you're full of shit. Oh yeah, so. definitely. That's, I mean, well, high school, high school sucked. True. The guy that used to bully me, he's actually a tech teacher in a school now. And I'm like, I have, someone's like, are you still upset? And I'm like, no, no, I'm not upset. But if a student threw a stapler at him, like, I totally wouldn't be mad. Like, it's <laughs> totally fine. Like, fuck it. <laughs> That's funny. Now, you had said something about you graduated an athlete, something about athletics. What, what yeah, type of sports did even you play? Though even though I'm fat, I did play uh, sports. I played uh, basketball and football. <laughs> football, huh? Like, yeah. like tackle football. Um, uh, I did, uh, I did a little bit of that, yeah. But I, I don't know. For some reason, they didn't really play me. I think they just added me on the team so they didn't have like a lawsuit. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you know, but I'm not like that kind of person. But yeah, um, I did, I did play, um. You know, and, and what position? We, I was a kicker. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, They're I like, try not to get, I try not to get, you know, trampled by too many dudes yeah. at, at one time. You know, just because they, they were, they're probably like the kicker's a safe position for the girl to play. Let her kick the ball. Well, see, I, I used to, I used to actually like. Besides the fact, most people who 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 know who know me mm-hmm. and stuff, they know that I'm fat now. Um, part of that is because I, I have a busted foot, a busted knee, and a busted back. So, for a while, and plus being in my marriage, I uh, did that whole uh, depressed eat, and so I gained a bunch of weight. Yeah. But since I left him in November, I've actually lost thirty pounds. Nice. So. Yeah, my goal is eventually, I can't really do a lot of the running and stuff that I want to do until I lose more weight. Otherwise, I'm going to fuck up my foot again. Ah, I got you. So, I mean, 
you know, yeah, I did. I, I played sports. Like, that was what I did. I loved playing, you know, yeah. anything and everything. Softball, basketball, baseball. I, It, it didn't matter. It's like, yeah. if, if I could get on and play, like, that's what I did. I... But, um, oh, and you want to, okay. So, remember how I always make that joke that the universe is trying to tell me to turn into a dude? <laughs> you know, especially because the whole Jason Ro- Roback or yeah. You know, and then there was that, and then uh, when I get on the phone in the morning, uh, I have a deeper voice, and yeah. so it's even deeper when I first wake up, and they're like, is Jessica there? And I'm like, this is her. Like, you know <laughs> well, when I got the award for uh, United States Female Scholar Athlete of the Year, it actually said male on it. <laughs> So it's just like every time I turn around, like the universe is trying to tell me to transition to a dude, but I'm just like, God gave me these tits and I'm not wasting them. You know what I'm saying? So, but if somebody wants to do that, fucking great on them, like whatever. But it's just uh, the universe may be telling me to turn into a man, but I'm just like, man, I'm good. Like, I'm not going to listen to you, universe. (laughs) Yeah, fuck you, universe. Like, I'm not doing it. Shut up, you're a big dummy face, universe. Mm Oh, man, no. Exactly. Something else I was wanting to ask you about. I know that you said you lived in paradise before. I know you you do you have your one joke where you say you lived in paradise. If you don't know about it, don't feel bad, because neither does our president. That yeah, because yeah, you that, went up there and called it yeah, yeah. pleasure, dude. Yes, yes. I, 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 I vividly remember him saying that. And everybody a fucking moron. Like yeah. I mean, he said some gems since then. Oh fuck yeah, Like that are even better. But you know, especially during the whole COVID thing. But yeah. like this isn't about the president. <laughs> so we're not gonna really go there. Yeah. But yeah, I did. I I actually lived in a town or well, a community. It wasn't technically called a town. I lived in a community right above Paradise, literally like a few miles right above paradise called Megalia. I just uh-huh. say paradise because people know paradise more than they know Megalia. Yeah, but still and, in the same proximity. Oh, yeah. Well, half of Megalia burned down, but, you know, there's no new stories on that. It's all yeah, about paradise. paradise. But, yeah, I was involved in the in the campfire. Um, it, was, it was really weird. My friend had called me and said, hey, did you see the sky? And I was like, yeah, it's cloudy. Like, who gives a shit? It's we live in the mountains, and she's like, "No, dude, that's smoke." And I was like, "Oh man, like this isn't gonna go good." But see, here's the crazy thing: like I've seen the documentaries since that day, uh-huh. and seeing that plume of smoke, I didn't realize that it was buildings in paradise burning to the ground, people running from their cars. Like, it was straight fucking apocalypse. Like, everyone's like, oh, COVID, it's the apocalypse. It's like, no, no motherfucker, that was the apocalypse. Like, it was literally burning. I saw it. tanks were exploding. I knew people who told me that they had to stab their tires just to get the air out of them. You know what I'm saying? Because when you have so much fire, it sucks the oxygen out of the air. Yeah. Or... Yeah, I guess that's the way of saying it. But it just sucks the oxygen out of the atmosphere. Yeah. So I knew people who were, like, stabbing their tires to get a breath of air. Oh, you wow. know, That's and, crazy. And it, I mean, it was crazy. And we lived, like I said, we lived in Megalia, so there's a whole reservoir there. Yeah. And it's separ- kind of separated. There's a there's a bridge that we had to go across to, to get to Megalia from Paradise. And there was a huge water thing. Uh, aqueduct, whatever the fuck it is, it's for drinking water. I don't know the correct terminology for it. Yeah. But in the past, it never went past that ridge. It never went, it never, like, it would never, um, no, nothing really came past there. Yeah. But what had happened was, is the smoke was so thick and so dense that the embers that were going up, usually if there's enough, um, enough of a place for them to go they dissipate well the problem was that the smoke was so thick from tires yeah. burning everything you know plastic a lot yeah. of those homes up there were were mobile homes and, and yeah. it's not like the mobile home that people think rv it's like no no it's a half a house and a half a house on axles and they put it together it was the 70s a manufactured that community, home that community back in in like the 60s and 70s was for the rich people from the bay area to come up and vacation Oh. So that's how it really started out. Okay. So they, the embers and stuff couldn't come down. So basically what was happening is 
the and plus the wind was like 60 something miles an hour they said it was gaining like what was it 80 football fields per minute like it was crazy it, it when it all was said and done it initially burned the size of chicago like Holy think of the shit. town of chicago or the you know the, the city of chicago yeah and that's exactly what burned up there oh wow so, so the the whole campfire happened and uh we i oh i am so glad that i had my friend because she's like look i know the back way so we went uh nimshu to centerville centerville mm-hmm. to honey run and then honey run popped us right out into chico okay. and we got off the we got off the mountain 25 minutes and i didn't know at that time that the the fire was spreading as fast it was, as it was because when we hit honey run mm-hmm. the ridge was on fire up there and my daughter's like oh shit, we're gonna die and i was like no no we're fine it's up there yeah like, you know and like there's literally fire trucks driving towards us and like running to these people's houses and knocking on the doors and it's like you gotta get the fuck out like yeah i didn't realize how fast this fire was spreading that's crazy so, we went and stayed in uh, Sierra Nevada, the brewing company. Mm-hmm. My friend's husband worked there. So we went to their like epicenter. It was like their big uh, meeting hall or whatever they yeah. had. The new Incredibles 2 was playing, which is brand new. They had that movie yeah. playing for the kids. All the rest of us were like, what the fuck are we going to do? You know? And so uh, my friends were so kind. They, they paid for us to go to a hotel. Oh, wow. Like, three days, three, four days out. We had to go all the way to Reading. There was no, there was absolutely no hotels anywhere close. Yeah. And so we get to the hotel and we're kind of just like, we're still in shock. Yeah. Like, what the fuck happened? And again, we're thinking that the house is still going to be there because it's Michaelia. It doesn't, you know, do that. Yeah. So Friday night, and it's just, this fucking fire is just growing the whole time. Just literally growing at super stupid speed and everything. My uh, my friend, who's who literally they lived across the street. When you hear that that term, I could throw a rock at her house. Like yeah. I fucking could throw a rock at her house. Yeah, you know. So she sent uh, her 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 ex husband uh, sent her a photo of their house, and it literally looked like there had never been a fucking house on the whole block. Like oh, it was wow. you you didn't even see the axles of their their it, like everything would just burn and they had a bunch of stuff like they were just kind of one of those people that just had like a lot of crap yeah it just you couldn't even tell and so I, you know me being the optimist that I am I'm like so how's my house mm-hmm. you know and she's like honey it's gone <laughs> oh wow and yeah from there on like it was just and even now like I still have issues uh, with it I don't like the smell of smoke (laughs) yeah like you know like the house that we ended up in in woodland yeah uh, they burn out there because it's the country they burn yeah like the first time i heard i smelled it come through my window i was like what the fuck oh (laughs) shit it's okay it's okay i was like no i smell smoke we're we're dying like it's on fire you know and then here's the fucked up thing about all of it so we get to woodland and this is in Yolo. This is in 2019, January, yeah. February. The fucking dam was close to breaking in oh, Yolo. Is that and Orville so, Dam or? Huh? Orville Dam or is that a different? No, dam? no, Yolo. No, Yolo. that's that's. There's that's a dam in Yolo. Yeah, there's a I dam didn't know in Yolo. That. Okay. Yeah, so like they're like, oh, it could, it could break, and and we were right on the cusp of the evacuation site, and I was like, not again, Lord, not again. <laughs> Because I was just like, fuck it, come hell or high water, we're going to fucking survive. Like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. But, like, we like the, we let the kids go to sleep, but me and my ex were, like, freaked out because of the fact that, hello, we just survived the campfire. And we're like, if this dam breaks, we lose everything because we had gotten paid out from our insurance. Yeah. We don't have renter's insurance at this point or anything. So if yeah. we lost everything after this fucking dam broke, like we would literally have lost everything. Yeah. So I was like, okay, once the kids went to sleep, we literally, it was, it's like when you see people like pack up their house, but it's yeah. on fast mode. Yeah. That's how we were running around the house, like packing up all our shit, putting it on top of the tables. Like every, like it was it, yeah. it really it, like it causes PTSD. And like, I do make jokes about it because like, that's how I am. Like, that's how I deal with stress. I'm the Chandler 
of the yeah. fucking group. Like, I make inappropriate jokes when you shouldn't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, I. but I will say this. The town of Paradise still is in very, very, like, they're, they're not even... They they just need so much work and, and so much stuff. Their their water's still poison. Oh two wow! Years later, yeah, their water's still poison. You know, two years later, um, like, and I think out of the two years, I think they said that only like eleven houses were built hmm. in two years because they get met with fees and building and and. It, People don't realize how much it actually takes to go from burnt down house to clean your lot to put a new house on. Yeah. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars that people like me didn't fucking have. Yeah. You know, I was a gutter punk kid who used to be, and literally, like, I was a punk rock kid who, like, didn't fucking follow the rules and didn't grow up until, like, later on in life. I had my kid. Yeah. And and I got with my ex, and we, you know, we moved into, we owned our house, we owned our cars, I owned a business up there. I was a candy maker, for Christ's sake. Oh, wow. Yeah, dude, like, I won candy competitions up there, chocolate competitions. Like, I, I, we, like, worked our ass off, and then in a blink of an eye, it was all fucking gone. And it's really hard sometimes to find the fucking funny in it. But the the stuff that I have found, like, you know, make sure you take your dirty clothes and not your clean clothes because I look like Honey Boo Boo at a swap meet for the (laughs) first two weeks. Like, you know, there are some funny points, but really, honestly, like, it was probably one of the most traumatic things that I've ever... And then, you know, I talk about the adoption of my son. Like... (laughs) I broke down. I called the adoption agency. I said, are you guys going to take my son? Because we don't have a house. Because the adoption wasn't yeah. finished yet. So oh, wow. I was just like, I was like, what are we going to do? Like, are you going to take him? Like, are you going to take my son that I've had since the day he was born? And they're like, no, 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 no. Like, this is extenuating circumstances. Like, yeah. We get it. <laughs> yeah, okay. And so I was like, oh, thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good. And so it was, it, it was a very long haul. Like from and and you know and that that whole thing made me realize that like I needed to pursue my dreams and and not just you know take care of other people for the rest of my life and 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 not do what makes me happy and that's how I ended up doing comedy. Hey, I feel you on that. Yeah. Now, I got two more things I wanted to talk to you about. I okay. think I'm gonna go with this one right here and you had mentioned early 98 rock and i guess you're you're friends with some of the people on there i know you probably talked about this before with other podcasts that we'll go ahead and mention the gag on this podcast but well, i, I, I want to hear it my, talk I, too too much about it but yes i i i would like to say that i'm friends with them yes okay. um what happened was is when i first got here i went to go to 106.5 mm-hmm. which used to be quad 106.5 that a lot of people don't know or might not remember uh i really enjoyed they had like punk rock lunch or some shit like that yeah um and and it was just it was a rock station and then when i turned it on i fucking heard new kids on the block and i was like what in god's name is this <laughs> this is a joke like what's going on here and so I looked it up, and they're like, 106.5, the end. And I was like, I thought it was 107.9, the end, because that's what it used to be back in the 90s when I lived here. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I started flipping through and flipping through, and uh, I found 98 Rock. I would listen to the Rob, Anybody, and Dawn show in the morning when I took the kids to work or yeah. to school. And then at, at night, or, you know, it was about 3 o'clock, that's when that damn show came on. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck is this? So, like, I was listening to it, and my daughter still repeats it, but they were talking about summer penis and, like, how your dick is a little longer in the summertime because <laughs> it hangs a little lower because, oh, you know, wow. whatever gravity, like, it's warm or something. I don't know. And my daughter <laughs> runs around, she's like, summer penis, summer penis. <laughs> she has an accent, but she does for some reason. And how old is your daughter? Eight. <laughs> that makes it even better. That's hilarious. Yeah, well, when she was doing it, she was fucking six, seven. Oh man, ish. that's a that's a that's no, a she joke. It's a joke right so there. So she, so like I would listen to it, and like again with being from the campfire stuff, these their show sounded 
like conversations me and my friends would have like sitting out on the back porch or like screwing around like their com their topics the way that they respond to them and stuff stroke is uh he's there i think kind of like the ring leader of them um yeah he's He's absolutely hilarious. Um, I'm trying to get him to do comedy, but he's like, I don't know, I don't know. And I was like, dude, seriously. Because he was just talking, uh, he, he, he uploaded a video and he was talking about like supplements that he takes and how he goes on walks. And he's yeah. like, you gotta be careful what kind of fucking supplements you take because this supplement I take gives me a fucking boner. And I'm out here walking around in the park, all of a sudden I pop a boner and yeah, that's going to be weird trying to talk to the cops when your fucking name is Stroke and you're running around <laughs> with a boner. And I was like, dude, I'm telling you, that's a fucking joke right there. Like, that's fantastic. That and is. That's really it, good. You know? And actually, Lara <laughs> from the show, she has actually done uh, improv classes over at the Comedy Spot. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And then Ian supposedly has done stand-up comedy, but I think he's full of shit because, yeah. in my opinion, he's not that funny. He's a cool dude. Like, he has cool, like, uh, ideas on movies. Like, he does movie reviews and yeah. stuff. Like, he's, you know, he's quirky and stuff, but I don't really see him as a, as a stand-up comic. I could be fucking wrong, but, like, from, yeah. even from what I've seen... You know, even his ex-girlfriend is like, yeah, I sat through a couple of his shows. He was shit. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, and maybe, you know, it is it is what it is. And then you got Mikey, who, honestly, I, I can't really find anything too fucking wrong uh, with with Mikey. He's a little stoner dude. You know, he likes going in festies and, and, and fucking he's, he's got a really kick-ass girlfriend. She's the one who did my, uh, my logo here. Oh, wow. Uh, that's, that's in my background. That's yeah. Cool. So like, it's really, it's really cool. And like, you know, there's so many people that go, Oh, I don't know why you like a radio station or why you're like a diehard fan. Well, be because like, it's really weird, but like, I've never actually like thought of this, but I'm like, they actually fucking care. Like, about their fan and their fan base and stuff like that. They did uh, the 98 Rock as a whole yeah. did the 28 Days of Christmas. Yeah. And so I had wrote them in for my daughter. And I said, hey, look, dude, she's had a rough, you know, year and a half or year. You know, she had we had the campfire and then she had to go to one school. Then she went to another school. She's, you know, she's really taken in stride. Yeah. But she really loves Elsa and she really loves uh, Disney. So yeah. my my request was, could you possibly hook us up with some Disney tickets? Now here's the fucked up part: we're in COVID, and those tickets end at the end of June. Oh. So hopefully, but here's the thing: hopefully, because we were gonna do, do it more towards her birthday, which yeah. was April. But from what I'm told, they'll honor the tickets. So okay. That's a plus. So I'm not that's too, too worried about it. Definitely. But um, but yeah, so. Like they, they had called me and I was actually dry. I was doing a job for, for some friends of mine and I was driving and I hear, um, Pat Martin on the, on the radio. And he's like, up next, we're going to surprise a campfire victim with her wish, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, it can't be me. There's so many other campfire victims, <laughs> like whatever. Yeah. Then my phone rings. I recognize the station number and I was like, shut the fuck up. Like I had to be careful, you know, cause it's radio. You can't, yeah. ask, you know, they cut it out. So I was like, hey, Pat, how's it going? Like, and then I, I totally got emotional and cried like a little bitch. Oh, <laughs> I mean, know, that's pretty cool that they do that, though. I mean, I know a lot then, of radio stations do that, though. And then a couple, like a month-ish before the COVID really took over, I won Joe Rogan tickets. Oh, wow. That's yeah, so cool. I'm really hoping that that doesn't get canceled. Oh, let's hope <laughs> not. I was like, I really wanted to see him. I... Some people can't stand him. They think he's annoying. But I'm just like, no, he just kind of fucking tells it how it is. So, I mean, it. I mean, you, you kind of have to have a brain sometimes to listen to him because he talks really fast. Yeah. He's not one of those people that you go to and you're a dumbass. Like, you kind of have to know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. But, yes, in a nutshell, and plus, like, 98 Rock, like, the one thing that I really like is that um, like stroke, he's he's kind of given me some guidance on like entertainment and other things. Yeah, which is really nice. Um, you know, he he's he's a really cool guy. And yeah, 
it you see the human of them. You don't see the, hi, this is 98 Rock, and I'm a total fucking douche, and I'm going to sit here and talk like this because yeah. I'm a DJ. Like, no, they're normal fucking people. Now, is that a live show, or is that something they pre-record and just air? No, it's, it's definitely a live it's show. It's definitely um, a live show. Right, yeah, right now they are actually broadcasting from their homes. Okay, uh, probably like doing some Zoom-esque thing or something to that effect. Well, they Zoom in the show and they can see each other. So like when they, when they want to talk, cause usually when they're in the, um, you know, in the, in the studio and shit, like they could just like, you know, raise their hand or like flap it around. Like, Hey, I need to say something. Yeah. So when they're on like the zooms, they kind of have to wave like, I got something to say. <laughs> yeah. But I definitely, I, I enjoy them. Like, they, like I said, it just kind of reminds me of home and they don't pull any punches. And if they don't sugarcoat shit, they don't, you know, they don't kiss ass or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. They're ultimately them, and so that's what I like. It's it's a, you could tell that it's a natural and not a fake bullshit kind of like stuff. Because I stopped listening to the morning show yeah. because and, and they can't say anything. I'm not saying that they said ever said anything, but I stopped listening to the morning show because I had wrote in and I was like, hey, I like your guys' morning show in the morning, and then in the afternoon it's like. I love listening, you know, to that damn show. You guys have great programming. Well, they read my email, but omitted the whole that damn show. So I was like, fuck you guys. Uh, Why are you gonna sh- I mean, you like, want people to listen to your station. Why are you going to shit on the afternoon show? Oh, that's right. Because they, they, they're better. Because, <laughs> 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 like, you. Oh, man, like honestly, you can only funny. listen to the people in the morning talk so much about, you know, how right they are and how stupid people are and. Yeah, yeah that's that seems like a weird thing to talk about in the morning. How stupid people are! I wouldn't want to hear that first thing in the morning. I wanna... Well, you know, Arnie, uh, Arnie, he's a comedian now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he used to be on that show. It was the Rob Arnie and Don show. Well, okay. Arnie took off from the show for whatever reason. I don't really know. Uh, I don't really care. But now it's the Rob anybody in on and so it's just like all right well if it's anybody like get someone different on the show (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but i mean it is what it is i i enjoy the radio station for what it is um basically like i don't know it's just i was so hoping to try and get you know like aftershock tickets this year yeah because that's actually a really badass um concert like i went to that concert this year and again, this is where they're human. Like yeah. they're out there having a beer with people, hanging out. Yeah. You know, like it was so funny. People fangirl over these motherfuckers. Like, That's it's crazy. So crazy. Like I was walking through. I was going. I think I was going to go down a little closer to see Rob Zombie or somebody. Oh, Rob Zombie. And uh, Mikey walked by with his girlfriend, and I had gone to a bowling night with these guys. I got picked to go do bowling with them for some yeah. reason. And I saw Mikey, and I was like, hey, Mikey, how's it going? And like, I gave him a high five. Uh-huh. And, like, people swarmed me and were like, how do you know Mikey? Can you get him to come back? Like, who was that with him? And I was just like, who the fuck are you? I'm like, y'all need like, to. It's really crazy. They have, like, a, a, their a following. very followers. That's like, cool, though. They were though. totally I mean... scanning these motherfuckers, and I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know you. <laughs> like, I'm not telling you shit. So you say you saw Rob Zombie at... Aftershock. That was this year. Yes, it was in 2019. Um, I got to see Marilyn Manson, Rob Zombie. Um, who are those little Asian girls? I forget. They're like a metal band. Baby but- metal. Yeah, I saw <laughs> them. They were fucking awesome. Um, I saw Blink 182. Oh wow! Which it was more of a nostalgia thing than anything because the lead singer just was sucking dick that night or something. <laughs> it, just, it wasn't It wasn't what I wanted it to be, you know? And then, um, yeah. let's see. I went and saw Chevelle, which that, that in and of itself is a different fucking story. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, my brother passed away on 9, 10, 11. He passed away from a drug overdose. Yeah. And so I, his favorite band was... Um, Chevelle and the song, you know, the red is his song. And so like, yeah. people were like, I was trying to get closer just cause it was just something I had to do. I, I, anytime that Chevelle had come through, uh, since his passing, like yeah. something, would come up. my kid would get sick 
or like I had to work or something like it just didn't fucking work. Yeah. And somebody had posted the day before and said, Hey, I have two tickets, 50 bucks for both of them. And these tickets are hundreds of fucking dollars, dude. Yeah. Even general admission. And I was like, I'll take it, you know? So like I went there and uh, again, stroke was coming out of his Uber and he was standing there like, you know, screwing around. I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy these tickets off this guy, you know? And he's like, you better make sure they're the hardback and not like, you know, the, the electronic ones. And I was like, oh yeah, no, no, they're paper. So dude comes, I give him 50 bucks, he hands me the tickets. So I have Chevelle in my hand. I'm just, I'm like that kid in the candy store that's yeah. just ruling over the sucker and just waiting for it to get paid. Yeah. And so I, I get I get to there and oh my God, like people found out, they're like, what's the, cause I, I wrote it in Sharpie on my arm, like yeah. nine, 10, 11. They're like, what is that? And I was like, oh, my brother passed away. Like, this is his favorite band, blah, blah, blah. These two drunk ass fucking girls were like, I got you got you friend and they're literally shoving people fucking out of the way and like hey this is this is a this is a this is a cause this is a this is absolutely we have to do this for her i don't know these fucking girls this is festival you know this is festival shit and yeah just like people are moving out of the way and all this i almost got like all the way to the front rail and like literally these girls just like it was like um oh crap what's it called like armor they just like just stuck a circle around me and like you know the song. exactly <laughs> and it was just like ching, 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 ching. and like they didn't let anyone fuck with me and like people were like what's going on with it like what's going on and so they found out and so people didn't like they didn't have to stand there anymore like people just kind of cleared yeah and it was really cool <laughs> oh, like i got neat. to hear it i got to hear the song and i got to finally like grieve the whole situation and it was more it was more than just his death. Yeah. It was it was everything. And like honestly, people are like, You're so emotional and like, yeah, well I kinda have a reason for being emotional. Yeah. <laughs> like I know that like I, I have jokes and shit, but there are times where I'm just like I am just such a pussy, like I will oh, cry at the top of the hat. <laughs> oh, there's certain songs I can listen to that'll make me cry like every time without fail. There's actually one slipknot song believe it or not that I can listen to that makes me think of a good friend that I had who liked Slipknot and it's just like every time I hear that song I think of him and it te- tears me up and then there's one that I hear in a, when I think about my mom but oh yeah, absolutely always, and it's always crazy gets me like, see and that's the thing that's the beauty of, of what we do as yeah. comedians and, and stuff is because like say someone's having that shitty day or that you know that memory and stuff they come to a show we fucking knock them off their ass and and make them laugh and they're like oh for a minute they forgot about why the fuck they were upset yeah you know and and that's how i got in into it um i was really having a rough time and i went and saw gabriel iglesias yeah and when i saw him it was his 40th birthday and he was in fucking reading of all places dude oh wow and so he's in Reading, he's doing his show, he literally picked up his timer, showed us that it was at zero, and threw it. He's like, fuck it, I don't give a shit. Like, he was drunk. Yeah. And he was just like, fuck it, I don't even care, like, let's just keep going, and people just... The place erupted, and the way that he told a story, executed a joke, told it, like, and encapsulated, and, and really entranced people, and I was just like... And some people might not think that he's the greatest comedian in the world. I fucking find him hilarious, so yeah. I don't really give a shit. And actually, that was my, my divorce present to myself I just paid for today because his show was supposed to be on 5-9, which is this month. It was supposed to be earlier this month. It got rescheduled till November 22nd, and it had sold the fuck out. Oh, wow. well, I went on there, and I clicked, and I found row two... Uh, uh, Section two, which is right in front of the stage, row two. Nice. Like, I'm one behind the front of the stage, and I'm just like, yes. So I I, I used a little bit of my stimulus money, and I bought myself a divorce uh, present, and that is to see uh, Gabriel Iglesias literally front and center. Oh, wow. That's going to be fun, I bet. Maybe he'll do crowd work. Maybe he'll talk to you. Oh, I've already talked to him. Oh, really? Yes, actually, when uh, when the fire had happened, 
he doesn't really, you know, say anything about it. But when the fire had happened, I and you, know, you can go back and look and find it. Yeah. But there was a tweet that I had tweeted to him and said, "Hey, the people in the fire were, you know, my ex is he's a bigger boy, and so my ex is having a hard time finding shirts, blah blah blah." He started following me on Twitter mm-hmm. and 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 shot into my DMs and was like, "Hey, um, I don't know of any uh, places, but give me your address, and I'll send you stuff." And I was like, really? And like, he asked like, how old is your son? How old is your daughter? Like, and he sent us two giant boxes of stuff. Holy shit. And it was, I have, I have one of his Hawaiian shirts that he wore on a special. And I'm not telling anybody which fucking one it is. Because, and that was part of my divorce stuff is I was, I told my ex, I was like, half them fucking Hawaiian shirts are mine, bitch. Because I know which one he wore on his one stand-up specials and i'm like that one's mine Do, like i even hit it have you ever worn it you should yes you you should wear it on stage that's hilarious like when Dude, you they're so big on me though the, like that, it's that'd be I, I i don't know if i should have them like taken in or not yeah and so but i i met i haven't met him personally i'm kind of hoping for it yeah um because he does meet his fans he he'll, yeah. he'll if you wait by his bus, he'll come out and say hi and shit. That's cool. He's super cool. And not to mention, he's now newly single. Wink, Uh-oh. wink. Hey. <laughs> but, you oh. know, his buddy Martine, uh, his little his, his little sidekick, or not really sidekick, but he he really talks about him a lot and stuff like that in his, in his stand-up. Uh, he had actually shown up with his son Hooter mm-hmm. to Harlow's in September. Really? Yeah, and so was and that when you were performing? I I was not performing there. No, this was a different. This was an actual. Uh, well, that was an actual show too, but uh, it wasn't Comedy Burger. But okay. this was a, this was a different show. Just him, his son, and a, and another comic that I fucking skips my mind. But him and I had spoke before. Um, we've done a little back and forth on Twitter. Plus mm-hmm. they also have what is called the yo, yo, yo podcast. Sorry. I had to plug it. <laughs> Cause I can't remember exactly what episode it is, but I spoke with him and hung out with him for three hours that night. Oh, wow. And, and we talked shop. We talked, you know, my comedy and stuff like that. And he went back on Monday and, um, he plugged me on the fucking show. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. He's like, dude, she, you know, we, we joke about it and stuff, but she really, you know, she's in it to win it. She says, and, and, and I am, cause I mean, I got a divorce because yeah. of it. Like comedy is really something that has helped me heal a lot of parts of me that other, nothing else could no therapy, no drugs. Oh, God, no, yeah. Like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I feel you definitely 100%. This is like, comedy is one of the things that the things that keeps me going it drives me to make me want to be better because it's like you just gotta keep improving and evolving don't get stagnant you know so he plugged me on that and he was talking because he's like so what is your stand-up about and i'm like oh well i talk about the campfire i talk about foster care i talk about my kids i talk about this and he's like how long have you been doing it and i had not yet hit the two-year mark um, so I told him I was only in it like a little over a year and he's like, that's crazy. Cause usually new comics and stuff, they do topical shit, fake shit, whatever. He says, usually comics don't get into their personal life until like year three and four. He's like, you've already done that. Well, yeah. He plugged it and he's like, you know, she talks about, you know, tough stuff, foster yeah. care and things like that. But, um, you know, he was talking about how like people don't usually get in that. And he was talking about how, um, uh, to use your pain and use things that you know. He's like, I don't know anybody in the comedy world that's talking about foster care. He's like, other than Tiffany Haddish, he's like, that's not a topic that somebody usually talks about. And yeah. he's like, but that's cool because like that shows other kids that were in foster care and other stuff that there's other things you can be besides a revolving door for the state, you know? And he's like, and it's the same thing. And then he, you know, he kind of threw in, you know, about being, brown like there wasn't a lot of brown people back in the day doing comedy but until they started seeing more and yeah. more people yeah exactly then you started, and, and it's the same thing it's like the invisible disabilities that you see oh, doing those shows I want to be on that so bad <laughs> you know what I'm saying like there's there's all these shows there's the, the LGBT yeah you know, yeah and, and 
and light, even even you know transgender shows and stuff like that. There is a lot of unspoken heroes that have yeah. done comedy that should be farther than, and that's just fucking my opinion. Some yeah. people are gonna listen to this and be like, "You don't even know what the fuck she's talking about." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> well, maybe I don't." But in my opinion, I feel that some comics should be able to do whatever the fuck they want, and they should also be. <laughs> I also feel that they there are some comics that um, should be farther than where they're at. They should be on a, a grander scale than where they're at. I think some people get stalemated yeah. uh, by certain things. There's so, a lot of politics in it. Yeah, but yep. I mean, like, honestly, I this is something that Martin <clears throat> Moreno uh, said. When you're, when you're doing this, don't get involved in the gossip. Don't talk shit about a club. And, and just, you know, do your material. Don't steal material. So basically, yeah. you know, just keep it, not like keep the comedy clean, but keep it clean. Don't get it, because, you know, I've, I've accidentally slid a few times in in the in the gossip of shit. And I was just oh, like, yeah. oh, no, no, no. Like, I got to back up, because I don't want to be involved in this. Like, I just don't. So, yeah. like, I just, I space myself. But I don't know about you, but there are also comics that I run into that I don't want to fucking deal with at all. Because I, <laughs> one, one, I don't like their personality, and two, I don't find them funny. I think they're horrible. I'm not obviously I'm not going to name names. Yeah, but, we're, I'd rather not have to edit names out. So that'd be no, great. No, no, you no, know, no, name like, names. Not, no, no, I'm not going to name. Unless names, it's fuck saying. that David Thorne guy. He's a real yeah, asshole. Yeah, <laughs> Douchebag. Yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, like, there literally is some some comedians that think that they're just such hot shit, and no, <laughs> they're not. Well, they're, and then also too, like, here comes my. I have a question for you. Uh -huh. What do you do when you find out that a comedian who's top or level or higher level than you is literally stealing jokes? I've never heard that before, but. I, I don't know. I don't want to say names, but it, I mean... No, no, I'm not saying names, but I'm saying, like, it just seems weird that these people are top, but yet you know that their material was stolen from something else. And it's older. It's not like it's... Like older know, material or something. I, I don't yeah. know. There's a lot of, like, throwaway jokes like that, too, that I guess people do. Well, there was one person that I, I had listened to, and there was a sitcom... That, that I watched and literally that joke was word for word from that sitcom like hmm. word for word and I was like wait a minute and it's weird too because I literally had just watched it and I was all that doesn't make sense that's weird and it, it's not something that, yeah it's 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 just crazy because there there have been times and even younger comics or you know as we would call them younger comics some of them are old people we're still but, young comics though aren't we you said you're what two years in yeah i'm still young yeah i'm, I'm, like still, I'm just, still learning yeah i'm just one year in so i'm still new but but i think it's funny when you listen to someone's comedy and, and they're new and it's like that's not yours oh well that's like yeah you probably accidentally have done well probably not you do a lot of stuff about your personal life but yeah i, know I don't do anything about about you know topical yeah. shit. i don't know um, i don't know what if my stuff's topical i don't really know what i do no, i just go up there yours, and I'm, yours, I'm, is unique, yours is unique to you i'm absurd and like dark everybody tells me i'm dark your comedy's so dark and i'm just like i i that's not that's not that dark i could go way darker <laughs> I don't. I don't think like it's. Too, there are a few jokes like the IKEA, you know, the, the IKEA joke. one. Yeah, huh? the tender joke. Yeah, that one. That one's kind of dark because you're like, yeah, I could, you know, hang myself now. Yay. Oh no, that's not the IKEA joke. The uh, oh, the art museum one. Oh no, stud finder. You're talking about the one comedians are such supportive people. I was yeah. outside comedy spot yeah. the other night telling the fellow comedian how I didn't have a place to hang myself. They're like. They're like, oh, I have a stud finder, and they let me borrow it. Yeah. Yeah, now I have a place where I can masturbate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, like, that was, and, and that was, that was just, it was just, I, I really, I really enjoy original comics, and I really enjoy original material. What irritates me, like I said, is when yeah. I hear comics, be it new or old, and I'm like, 
Because all I ever do, all I'm not even kidding, all I ever do is listen to comedy, watch comedy, yeah. watch, uh, read, and like my whole life, literally, and like, you know, there's Ellis and Carlos and all them. I have deep dived their fucking videos, like to oh, that wow. point, like just watching, you know, like watching yeah. them when they were young and stuff, and like people are like, you're a fucking weirdo. And it's no, like no, because no, studying the art, but I have to study, yeah. like, and and these are the people that are top in our scene. So like I look and I study them and and you know what they fucking they're fantastic, and and like I I watch comedy like I love watching comics in cars getting coffee or whatever it is. Oh yeah, Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. Because people aren't gonna really know some of this stuff that they're talking about unless you're an actual fucking comic. You know, you know what? I, uh, that that brings up a very good point. I might actually have to check out that show now that you say that because I, I never really thought about it like that. But then again, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the world. <laughs> yeah, that was, you know, like uh, when they were talking about, you know, doing their sets and getting up and, and this, like on the... Um, Oh crap! What was his name? David Spade? David Spade and 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 I've shared it on my Facebook recently. But David Spade and Adam Sandler were on there, and he's like, "Yeah, I love the people who like got six months in, and like I got an hour's worth of material." And he's like, "No, you fucking don't." <laughs> like, he barely. He's like, he was like, when I was like six months in, I barely had five ten minutes. Like, and I yeah. was like, I understand this. Like, I get it because yes, there are people that come in and they think they're top shit and that their shit don't stink. And, and, and all that, and they're just like, I've got an hour, and I'm like, fuck no, you, dude, I've been doing no. this two years, and I don't even have, you know, a half hour, so fuck off. <laughs> like, I have a 20, I've just never been able to perform said 20. <laughs> I think the most I've Not done yet. so far is 15, maybe, 15, What was 12. that bar that we went to in Stockton? Uh, Coe's? Yeah, we killed it that night, and we each had, like, 10-minute sets. That was, like, the first time we went there, right? Yeah, yeah. Because wasn't we, it, like, me, Eric Hickox, Hector? Eric Hickox, Jay Walk, uh, Danny D, um, um, Jordan Quattlebaum, well, he, Terry, yeah. Nick, or TC, sorry. TC, Nick. And Nick, uh, whatever. Nick Michelson. Remember. Yeah. yeah, I always want to call him Mickelson because that's what it looks like to me. But yeah, Mickelson. I don't know. I don't know. I remember that one, and I don't feel like I did well that night. Because <laughs> I know that before I went up that night, Jay Wook was like, "It's like treat this like an open mic. I don't want to hear you do anything that you've ever done before." And I'm like, "Bet." And I went up there and did, tried a bunch of new stuff, and I don't know. I didn't feel like that was that great of a show. My first co show was way better. But, yeah, that one was all right. Well, that was the first time that you and I had actually spent any real time together. Yeah, yeah, we, like, like rode down wow. there. Yeah, yeah, we rode down there together. I and then it was that. so funny because on the way back, you just, like, I fell asleep. Out. I remember that I passed out, like, and I just, I don't know. That was, like, that was a bad time back then, kind of, so. <laughs> no, I, I don't think it was really a bad time. No, I no, honestly, that, like, on like, the way there, you were, like, I'm tired. Yeah. And then me and you, like, we drank a few beers, we played some pool and stuff, yeah. and then, like, you dis a fucking period. Oh, yeah, we went out in the parking lot, and we were probably smoking weed. And I don't know. Out in the parking you lot. Yeah. and I was like, this motherfucker took off, and he has my keys, because I didn't have any pockets. Yeah, yeah, I remember getting that text. I was, I, was, I was still was there. Like, I was like, what the fuck? Where is this guy? I was like, I can't get stuck out here. Oh, no, because I was still married at the time. If I would have got stuck at a bar in Stockton, oh, God, yeah. I would have never no, fucking heard the end of it. No, I, I, uh, I was out in the parking lot. You had nothing to worry about. But, yeah. yeah I, no. But no, I mean, and it's cool because, like, people, people see comics and stuff, and they don't know, like, the shit that we do. <laughs> like, oh, we God. do dumb shit after shows. We're a bunch of degenerates. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We stand outside the comedy club half the time when uh, our other fellow comedians are inside doing their sets. It's it's this wants me to makes me want to bring something up to our next yeah. topic, and I'm gonna go ahead and segue into it like this. But what you know, it? have you ever been sitting in the Zoom show and you just wanted to go stand outside and talk to somebody instead of listening to somebody's set? Because that happens to me all the time in Zoom shows. I'm like, man, I want to go stand out in front of Luna's and talk to somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, wait, I'm gonna go and smoke like ten cigarettes. Yeah, I was like, I, I, like, yeah. I mean, a lot of people shit on Zoom shows, so it's and it's crazy because like I've been doing them. Yeah. And 
I don't give a fuck what people have to say about me, but everybody already knows that. I don't give a yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You, you can't give a fuck what anybody says. But what gets me is, like, everybody's, like, shitting on him, like, oh, well, you know, all these thirsty comedians and shit, and it's like, motherfucker, we all ain't headliners like you, you little shit. Yeah. Or, you know, and they're not always headliners, but it's just funny how some people just kind of look down just... on Zooms. But here's my thought. Yeah. I did a Zoom. You were there. I, I did a Zoom in, in New York today. And, yeah. like, I would never fucking have been able to do no. any sets in front of these people I and didn't... stuff like that. So, like, I actually enjoy it. There's a there's a bunch of people in Oregon that I enjoy. Uh, yeah. You know, I would have never known about Savage Henry or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, like, I did the Savage Henry one. That one was a good time. I didn't feel like yeah, I did that like, great. But... And, and plus... <laughs> Plus, there's it's it's cool like and 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 it's just so funny because you know the the like bottom feeders are like, how do I get paid to be on a Zoom? And it's like, dude, it's a fucking Zoom, man. Like, you don't need to get paid to be on a Zoom. You should just be grateful that they're allowing you to be on their fucking mic because yeah. they don't know you for shit. I know. I'm just. Know? I'm not trying to get paid with it yet. Maybe someday if it happens, it happens. But I just do it because I like well, doing it. Like, they're starting to open up like tonight yeah. they just had the one degree of separate or yeah one degree of separation over at yeah um, at laughs laughs unlimited like and and most places it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tier thing right now it's 25 percent capacity and if we still see these numbers drop it'll it'll go higher but yeah. you know it's it's all a, a matter of that but you also have to remember people are gonna get rusty during yeah. oh. staying at home so I've why not practice your newer material and your older material on a yeah. zoom where people maybe not local to you yeah <laughs> like, that, that's what somebody like, yeah, I bombed. <laughs> somebody brought that point up like trying like you i thought about going and doing like a bunch of old material at one of these mics sometimes stuff that i know that i've did that i know has done well at like punchline and the shows that i've did like, I know I did my, uh, I went and did one, a blue mic the other night. I did my minor hill joke. I did my minor <laughs> hill joke, or the how I originally do it, you know, where I'm like, crawling is the right position, you know, that part. <laughs> that, that, uh, I don't know, that part hits for some reason, but I've, I, there's I think... other ways that I do it, but yeah, I did that and that did well, and then when I tried to do some of the new stuff, I've been like, I guess half-ass working on, then it Well, another like, thing yeah. too is, it even with open mics where there's still a lot of comedians, there's still audience members, so one of the things that I've ran into, like I was telling you today, I was like, yeah. I don't think I did very well, but you're like, dude, it's a room full of comics, there's, yeah. I'm you are the only audience member. Like a lot of people so, have their mics muted too. I know. Yeah, I, and, I, and it's, yeah, that's frustrating too, because like you want to like I have to put it where you can see everyone's face yeah. when I do a Zoom, because like I'm looking while I'm doing my jokes and like I watch people because a lot of them mute their mics, but they're still laughing and it's yeah. like, no, unmute your mic, motherfucker, so I know <laughs> if it's funny or not. Yeah. Like, I, I can't work on it if I think, hmm, like, it might not really be there. Yeah, I don't know, sometimes. Sounds like Kermit the Frog there. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I just write stuff and I feel like it'll work, and, you know, you try it, and it's just like, that didn't work anyway how it should have. And then you just write oh. that stuff sometimes that just works, and it's just like, I don't know why that works, that's stupid as fuck, but it does. Well, also, you don't have the energy of the crowd, you don't have, like, I mean, there are downfalls to it, absolutely. But there isn't, like, a ton. Like, because a lot of these mics are, um, they're not broadcast. They're not streamed. Yeah. You know, most of them aren't. Yeah. So you're just there to work your material. Um, yeah. I've been, I've been on, um, you remember that show, Last Comic Standing? Yeah. Well, the winner of it, Dat Fan. Yeah, yeah. I've been to his room since this this whole corona thing yeah. or whatever lockdown i added him as a friend because i was like hey why the fuck not because i recognized yeah. his name or whatever he literally messaged me immediately and was like hey do you want to be in one of my rooms and i was like uh yeah. sure like when would i get this opportunity to like yeah definitely so he's like hang on i don't like doing all this stuff in in messenger here's my number and i was like fuck it's a fake 
You know, because like yeah, there's a lot of fake shit. Yeah. Like people impersonating, so I was like, "Fuck, this is fake." Yeah. But then he texted me. I texted him back. He sent me the lineup and everything, and I yeah. was like, well, "Maybe this isn't fake." So I went and did the first one. By the way, I'll have to say, toot my own horn. I knocked them all motherfucking dead. Oh, nice. So, um, but yeah, he he's really cool, and he runs a very prof- in my opinion, very professional mic. Yeah, it is just to kind of you know work your material and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's very it's very professional. You have to stay in frame the whole time. You have to freaking not be distracting and moving around and all that stuff. You have five minutes, you know, and and it's it's very and it's very you know. There's no technical glitches. There's, you know, there's it's very it's a very good mic that I've worked on, and I've been on his shows like I don't know three or four times now since. Yeah. So and what, yeah. when is, what night is that show? It's not a night. He does a sh- he does a fucking mic every night. Really? Yeah. I- so. You maybe wouldn't want to add him. Wink, yeah, I wink. might. Wink, wink. I'm. Uh, I've seen him on the added, but I, you know, sometimes you add people like that and they don't, you know, accept your request. But that's. Oh I no, guess dude, that's he, he he reached out immediately. If really? You, it, yeah, almost fucking immediately. And so what I would, since I've done shit with him, I'm not. Oh, that's another thing. I'm so fucking sick of getting people oh somebody friend requested you somebody friend requested you and you don't know if it's from your comedy or just another comedian adding you because like i don't know about you but there's some friends of ours where we have like 250 people in fucking common yeah so i'm like oh okay like all right and so like i'll add then it's hey baby hey sexy hey how you doing i'm like you look here motherfucker you must be very very thirsty and really needing a fucking (laughs) drink you parched or something because you're coming into my fucking dm I have a mirror. I know what I look like. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I know that this is not for real. That's okay. Funny. I, I don't. I don't have that problem. Surprisingly enough, nobody ever slides in my DMs and Dude, sends me nudes. There was one Never the other day that got. Ma- I mean, you saw it. Like, there was a guy the other day. Literally, got mad at me because I was like, "Dude, you're fucking sexually harassing me. I don't know I, who the fuck you are." I remember and, that because I wrote and, that poem and sent it yeah. to you. I was like, "I was gonna send this to the guy, but you I should have sent it." Oh, I felt like that would have been threatening, and I would have got put in Facebook jail for that because I was just like, "Dude, he was super abr- like." I didn't show the whole thing, but it was just like. He's just like, hey, baby, you're so sexy. Like you, just, and I'm like, hello, like, who are you? And like, no, and he was like, hey, baby, and I was like, first of all, no, no, yeah. no. Let me educate you on some things. A woman does not, a real woman does not want this fucking childish shit. And second of all, don't call me those names. My name is Jessica. <laughs> not fucking sexy or baby or all this other stuff he's like but i'm just trying to you know holler at you and i'm like what are we 12 like no like i I don't want anything to do with this and then he turned tries to turn it around on me and is like oh well you know you're right and and i'm like wait a minute you're gonna try and shame me because you sexually harassed me and i told you to go fuck yourself like that's not how it works bro first this is not how it works First off, that guy had a fucking fedora on. You should have instantly I known he was Nina's a fuck. Yeah, Did he's fedorable. He's fedorable. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but that guy was a fucking straight up incel. Like, you know Honestly, what an incel is, He's right? like, I'm a screenwriter. Really? What the fuck have you written? That's funny, like, but besides fucking jerking off to your screen, like just what like, have you written? Just like send them. Um, just next time a dude does that, just like find a dick pic from the internet and send him a dick pic. Be like, this is who I used to be. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Just like, send it like, I know this is then, what you really and, want. Yeah, but then here's the fucked up part. He'd be like, I- I'm cool with that. And he'd be like, oh, damn it. <laughs> like, you know, they're like hella thirsty. And I get them, I get them in, uh, I do TikTok. I don't give a fuck what people say. I do TikTok because I yeah. think they're hilarious. But, um, like... I get them in TikTok all the time, but I get, hey, baby, I want to be your sugar daddy. And I'm like, I have diabetes. Leave me alone. I'm I like, well, no. Shoot, you should play that shit up. Come on That's now. Like, get no, one of those dumb motherfuckers and take bullshit. all their money. Like, <laughs> I, I followed one down the rabbit hole just to see if what this shit was. Yeah. And I was just like, hmm. and he's like, well, you know, I have funds in this account. 
but I need you to buy a gift card. Oh. So I'm like, ah, go fuck yourself. I'm not going to do it. Like, oh, no. Yeah, because yeah, what I got they do you. is you buy the gift card, you give them the information, they take the fucking gift card, and you're, you're stuck there going, hmm. There was a, uh, my friend, she has such a big heart. She goes, yeah. I have this lady who is engaged and all this other stuff. I'd like for you to make her cake for her wedding and all this other stuff. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I was like, have they ever met? Like, this is an online thing. And she yeah. said, oh, no, they have never met. Dude, two minutes of internet search and I found that that guy was a fake. It's, uh, he was in, oh, he's in the military. Really? Oh. So. I went on her profile, I found the guy's picture, I looked at it, and there's a website that you can go on to look for all these, uh, like, fake soldiers and shit. Yeah. So I went on, and I looked and looked and looked, and boom, within two minutes, I found him, and I'm like, how fucking stupid, you guys know that we have the internet at our hands, like, this is what I try and tell guys, don't piss off your girlfriends, because we are craftier than the fucking FBI, we will find your lie. Like, it is so easy to hack emails because guys usually use stupid fucking passwords. We can hack your email. And once we hack your email, we can hack your fucking Facebook. Oh, wow. Oh, no, it's so easy. It is so fucking easy. And obviously, you could tell I am a damaged person because, you know, I know how to do this stuff because my exes were, like, disgusting and they cheated. But, like... (laughs) And this is how I found it out, you know? So I'm just like, but don't piss off women. Like, oh God, I've, I've we can literally that. put a Trojan horse in your phone that literally duplicates and replicates it and sends it back. I'm not wow. telling people how to do that one because I don't want to be held liable for some fucking shit. <laughs> But this I isn't, am, this is, I is am, this a podcast? This isn't the anarchist cookbook. <laughs> oh, dude, most of that shit doesn't even work. I I was going to be a a, a forensic scientist. I was going to be a a crime scene investigator. And the guy who taught the class, his name was Mr. Er, uh, Dr. Fox, Mr. Fox. He was actually one of the people that helped take down Charles Manson. And he said the anarchist cookbook is a bunch of bullshit. Most of that shit doesn't even work. There's actually a guy on, uh, there's a documentary on Netflix talking about the guy that wrote the anarchist cookbook. And he tells about, how he kind of regrets it and shit like that. Because it I didn't doesn't wa- work. I don't know. I'm not. I, I, okay, I have a funny you know, story. The tennis balls with the matches in it. Like, that don't, That would have worked like 50 fucking years ago when they didn't have protected seals and all sorts of other shit. But yeah, there. that that shit's dated. That was made in like the 70s and shit probably. Yeah. It was made like, a long time that ago. That stuff not work now. Now people have fucking um, crock pots filled with nuts and bolts that they explode. Pressure cookers. Pressure cookers, yeah. Not, not crock pots. Cro- how would a crock pot Pressure work? It's, you it's know like, how do I know crazy? that? You know, with the whole disasters and everything like that, I'm waiting to find out that Mark Wahlberg signed on to do the Paradise movie. <laughs> because he did Deep Horizon, he did Boston, he did Philadelphia, or whatever the fuck that movie was. I don't think he was in Philadelphia. Eagles. No, no, there was a... <laughs> It was a movie about the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. Like, I forget what it was called, but it's, they're all, you know, yeah. um, stories. Uh, he did that one movie with Mickey Rourke where he was the boxer and shit. But, well, it was a story of Mickey Rourke, but it was Christian Bale and Mark. All these movies, all of them are true stories. And I'm just yeah. like, I can't wait for him to be running shirtless with, like, a little kitten going, <laughs> we're going to make it. It's okay. We're going to get out of this. It's okay. And his nostrils flaring and shit like <laughs> i just can't wait for that movie to come out to be like you're full of shit that's hilarious oh anyway let's uh get ready to wrap it up at the end i usually like to ask you know not a lot going on at the moment but do you have anything coming up any plans for the future in comedy just go ahead and plug any socials or anything um, like that that, that you want to get out there my plan is to um once things start opening up and open mics start hopefully happening, I'll start hitting those again. I'm going to do Zoom shows. I'm I'm going to be on some um, here pretty quick. Um, there is somebody that I'm talking to to potentially do a 26 town or 26 cities tour. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. So um, I do have potential. I, I have some movies in the work, actually. Oh, wow. Uh, 
Yeah, I just I don't want to jinx them and say what they are. So. No, no, don't definitely uh, by all means. And it's not like I'm leading actress or anything. It's they're all small roles, but still, it's something. Still, to it's a in, it's a credit. Know. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, they, I have a couple of movies, um, a potential tour, um, and it's not like I'm headlining or anything like that. It's just I would be part of the tour and, and there's like nothing wrong with that. and shit like that. So yeah, yeah, I don't know anybody else that potentially might be touring but um yeah i'm looking forward to to that um and and just kind of basically any and every opportunity that comes forward i mean obviously unless it's like selling my soul to the devil because i really don't <laughs> want to do that um again and uh <laughs> <laughs> but no I, i'm trying to hopefully just you know get back into the comedy thing and and, and, and actually, in all honesty, I kind of like doing uh, comedy through other uh, means of stuff. Yeah. Because I did a few things on Stab where, where uh, or I did one thing on Stab where I used, like, Snapchat filters and screwed around. I thought that was hilarious. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really cool. Um, but I like seeing how, okay, we can't go here, so let's figure out how to keep doing comedy and bring it to everyone else. Definitely. I yeah. don't. I don't do sketch comedy, and I don't do improv. Like, yeah. That's just not me. But I tried it with the characters that I created. Yeah. And it actually worked pretty good. I did a little bit of sketch, so I, I might try and keep doing that a little bit. Yeah. But I'm waiting for better recording equipment so I that gotcha. it just doesn't look like I did it on my phone or my laptop. I hear you. I'm definitely on that tip myself. I want to try and upgrade when I can but yeah I am going to start a podcast I guess I can plug that but I'm yeah. going to start a podcast about like news and entertainment and just dumping and talking shit on them yeah um, basically talking about like being a mom and, and kids shit and and you know how the school system is basically going to fucking go under if it keeps going the way it is because I am not a teacher yeah and I hate doing this at home stuff like my kids i'm just gonna tell her start learning how to be a stripper <laughs> that's great <laughs> all right do you have any uh social media that you want to plug um, or anything like that yeah they can find me on facebook at jessica roberts comedy um i don't know the actual like URL. thing for that yeah. the url for that um you can find me on instagram and tiktok under uh at J Roberts five three seven seven, um, and then what else do I have? Mm -hmm. I have an Instagram. I have a Facebook. Okay. Twitter. Oh, Twitter. <laughs> yeah, but see, here's the shitty part about Twitter. I can't get them to change my fucking name on it. So it's my old. Um, it's my married name. Like I've been trying to get the at you know whatever changed, and I don't know how to do it for the life of me. And I don't mm. think I can change it. I can change my name on it, but I can't actually change okay. um, the thing. So um, for Twitter, it's at J Eggleston 5377. That's at J E G G L E S T O N 5377. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's all my social medias. Yeah, yeah, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. You know what, man? Like, I really wish this was back in the day where fucking you got good because fucking word of mouth, not how many followers <laughs> you had and not how many fucking stupid sites you put your shit up on. Yeah. Or YouTube. I mean, I have a YouTube page, but I don't fucking. That's mine. All right. I got to have one thing that's fucking private. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to go on there and look and be like, what the fuck does she watch? And you're like, none of your business. Leave yeah. me alone. Well, all right, Jessica, I appreciate you being on tonight. It's been fun talking to you. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and end it there, all right? Thanks for watching, guys. Like, share, subscribe, comment, tell me what you thought. Follow me on Twitch at The Southern Reject. Thanks. Have a good day.